Hey guys, so for this video, we are back in some familiar territory, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, so the key difference to uh, to this trip as opposed to all my other Vegas trips is that I brought, I don't think you guys can see them, but I am with a bunch of childhood friends. And these guys are smart, responsible adults with normal jobs. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of poker going on. However, I will be playing at the Bellagio at least once, mainly just for the vlog to be able to have a session here. It's either gonna be 5.10 or 10.20. If there's a bigger game, I'll try to get into it, but uh, you know, there's like politics involved sometimes. Anyways, the exciting part about this particular video is that these guys, despite being, like I said, employed citizens helping the community, they also enjoy poker themselves. So I think they're gonna be playing one three, one two, and uh, you know, games like that. I'll also be partaking if I can. And what I wanna do is include a hand from each of them in the vlog. So stay tuned after my session to hear some of their poker. Anyway, that's it for now. Let's get to the Bellagio and play some poker. All right, everyone, here we go again. This time I'm playing 2040 No Limit here at the Bellagio in Las Vegas, a very famous casino. Let's get underway. I sit down with $23,000. I know it's kind of an odd amount, but it's just based on what I brought with me. Anyway, in the first interesting hand, we see a middle position open to $140. The small blind calls and I look down at king eight in the big blind. It's worth noting that this game plays with a big blind ante meaning that there's an additional $40 dead in the pot. Because of this, we're incentivized to play many more hands, and that includes defending more hands from the big blind, such as this one. So I toss in the call, and we go three ways to a flop, which is not bad for my hand. King, queen, five, rainbow. So we've got top pair here. Not a strong kicker, but you know, top pair is top pair. Small blind checks, I check it to the initial raiser, and he checks behind. Turn card is not great, it's the queen of clubs, so now anyone with a queen is beating me, obviously. Small blind checks again, I see no reason to bet, so I also check. And now the initial raiser puts in a bet of $280. Small blind folds, now it's back on me. I think releasing right away would be a little bit too weak. He could be doing this with all sorts of hands that don't necessarily have me beat just yet, including flush draws, straight draws and everything in between. So I make the call and we see the five of clubs on the river. Double pairing the board, but it does bring in a potential flush. Don't really love this card because like I said on the turn, he could be bluffing with some flush draws, which obviously now complete. So I check it over to him and he does not check back. $660 is what he bets instead. And now we have a decision between calling or just letting it go. On one hand, we obviously lose to any queen. If he somehow has a five, which I think is very unlikely, that beats us as well. And also flushes ace-king that plays somewhat deceptively. You know, you guys get the idea. But on the other hand, we are getting a pretty good price since he only bet around half pot. So don't have to be right too often. And we're still beating some hands that could stab the turn like ace-jack or ace-10, jack-10, etc. As you guys can probably guess... It's a close decision, and when that's the case, I lean towards putting chips into the pot. This time is no different. Unfortunately, we are losing to 10-9 of clubs, so not off to the best start, but let's see if we can fix that with this next hand. Same player opens to $120, and I look down at queen-jack offsuit in the small blind. Now, typically, I play in games that don't have a big blind ante, and when that's the case, I think re-raising out of the small blind makes a bit more sense. So that's what I do here, I make it $600. The second I do this, I realize that probably just calling is fine with my hand, and even folding, of course, is acceptable since queen jack offsuit is nothing special. But this time, I do utilize it as a re-raise bluff. 
and only the initial raiser makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up against that same opponent from the last hand, out of position once again, but to a decent flop, queen nine six. So just like the previous one, we've got top pair. A lot of hands I think would continue with a small sizing, so that's what I do with queen jack. $440 and he calls. Turn card doesn't change a whole lot, it's the seven of spades, but I do think it's a little bit better for him than it would be for me, generally speaking. Don't really see a whole lot of value in continuing to bet now. I would also slow down with some over pairs and you know, strong hands as well. So I check it over to him, see what he wants to do, and he decides to check it back. So I'm feeling pretty good about my hand now until the river is the ace of clubs. Now, just because there's an over card doesn't mean I would necessarily expect him to have that, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure what hands he would call on the flop with and then check back the turn with. So I think he could have some potential ace highs that floated and now improved to top pair. For that reason, I decide to check it over to him, and he does not. Instead, he puts in $1,600. Kind of an odd situation now with second pair, and of course, this is one of the issues of playing hands like my own. You could get into some dicey situations. He's got $5,000 more after his $1,600 bet, so we have a decision between just letting it go, calling in case he's bluffing, or using our hand to bluff and jamming all in. And if I'm being honest, I don't really love any of the options a whole lot. I think calling is my favorite one, but I haven't played this hand in the best way, mainly pre-flop, and uh, that's what's got us to this somewhat odd situation. In the end, I decide to take the more aggressive route and check raise all in, using my queen as a bluffing card. I think it's less likely he's got two pairs. But looking back, even though he does fold after thinking for a bit, I think just calling is probably fine. Just seems unlikely he would be bluffing after checking back the turn. I feel like if he was bluffing, he would have started firing previous to the river. But uh, yeah, this one goes our way. Like I said, not really in love with the way I played it. Anyways, the very next shuffle, we get a hand that is much nicer than Queen Jack offsuit. There's a late position open to $120, and I look down at pocket queens. Definitely worth raising, so I make it $400 in position. Small blind disagrees with my pricing and instead bumps it up one more time, 1320 is the total. Pretty big raise, and after someone opens and I re-raise, I feel like this could easily be a very strong hand. So don't really wanna fold, don't really wanna re-raise again. I just call in position, and we go to a flop heads up of 653 with two diamonds. Pretty good flop, we've got an over a pair, obviously still losing to aces and kings, but if that's what he's got, so be it. This is pretty much the strongest hand I would ever have in this situation, so it's just time to hang on for dear life. And it seems like that's what's gonna have to happen because he continues firing for $1,120. I make the call and we see the eight of spades on the turn. Not surprisingly, he slows down and checks. At this point, my opponent has like $5,000 behind, so essentially just a pot-sized bet. But I don't really think jamming all in makes a whole lot of sense. I think if I had bluffs or value bets, a lot could be accomplished with just around a quarter pot-sized bet. So that's what I decided to do, put in $1,240, and he snap folds. So it looks like we were up against just an ace-high sort of hand, but no complaints, I'll take it. Next, we get a little bit of a less action-packed hand where I open pocket eights to 120 from early position and only the player on the button calls. Flop comes down ace, nine, four, rainbow. Obviously not a whole lot going on for my pocket eights, but this is a board where I think I'd bet all my hands for a small size, so that's what I do, $80, and he makes the call. Turn card is the nine of diamonds. Pretty okay card, I think, but all my hands would be checking on this particular one since it's much better for him than me. So I check it over to him and I'm happy to see he checks it back. River is the six of spades. My hand is obviously good enough to win at showdown, but I don't really think there's a point in value betting. Not sure what worse hand would call. Perhaps a non-believing four, but again, I don't really see a whole lot of value in betting. I check it over to him again. He checks it back and we win. So this hand in particular, like I said, not very exciting, but it is a representation of how most hands go when I play these sessions. Don't always include them, but here you guys go. A little bit of a reality check. However, this next one is quite the opposite. There's an early position open to $120. This is the same player I've been battling with for the majority of the session. And then it gets to me in the big blind looking down at ace-queen suited. Very powerful cards, so I decide to re-raise, making it $660 to go out of position. And he makes the call, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop. 
which is a great one for my hand. Ace, five, four with two diamonds and one club. Now, I used to always just bet small on boards like these, but upon some further investigation, I think checking top pair on draw heavy boards makes a lot of sense, especially out of position. Ace, five, four, there's two diamonds out there, plenty of straight draws available. That's what I do this time. And my opponent checks it back. Turn card is the three of spades. I feel like a lot of strong hands, including combo draws or stuff like that would have began betting on the flop. So now I do decide to bet. Sure, any deuce makes a straight, but given the pre-flop action, feels unlikely either of us would ever have that. Seems like a blank card to me. I do put in a bet now, $480. No need to go too big since that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense after checking the flop. $480 is the bet. My opponent makes the call. Interesting river card as we improve to top two pair with the queen of hearts. But given how I've played this one so far, I would be checking a whole lot of my hands, including ace-jack, ace-10, maybe even ace-king at this point. So as much as I want to bet, I think there's more value in just checking and letting him either value bet a worse hand or bluff with any sort of floats he could have had on the turn. This opponent in particular seemed to err more towards the gambly side, so... I decide to just check and let him fire away, which he sure does. $1,240. I call right away, of course. He just shakes his head, says, I got nothing. So I turn it over and we win. Almost a $5,000 pot. Things are going much better now, despite the first hand going the wrong direction. And now we get moved from the must move table to the main game. Upon sitting at this new table, the other guys let me know that we're doing bomb pots every dealer change, and that's exactly what's going on here. I put $100 in the middle, we're six-handed, and we go to a flop of 10-8-3, all spades. Right away, a great situation for me, as I have the nut flush draw and bottom pair. 600 in the pot, action checks to a player in middle position who bets $300. Seems like a pretty strong play, but with my hand, I think it's okay to raise. Don't really need to do that in position though. So I just call and we get a magical turn card. The three of clubs giving me a very disguised three of a kind. Most likely I'm gonna have the best hand at this point and that seems to be confirmed when he decides to check it. He's got around $3,000 behind. So I decide to bet 900 trying to set up an all in on the river. But it turns out it'll never come to that because after some thought, my opponent decides to check raise all in for, like I said, a total of $3,000. If he's got a full house or a flush and he played it this way, bless his soul, he trapped me very well. But of course, I'm not going anywhere with a hand as strong as my own. I call and he shows ace-10 offsuit. So we're in very good shape, looking for a clean river card. And that is what we get, the king of clubs. No disaster story here, and we're gonna win an over $7,000 pot as a very warm welcome to this new table. Next, I look down at 10-3 of spades on the button. Action folds to me, and like I said earlier in this video with a big blind Annie out there, widening up a little bit is more than okay. In fact, I think it's encouraged, so that's what I do here. I kick it up to 120. Big blind defends, and we go heads up in position to a flop of jack-9-3. So we've got bottom pair as well as some backdoor potentials. And it's also a board that I'll generally connect with, I think. So he checks it over to me. I bet $100 and he calls. So we're probably not in good shape after that action. But the turn comes to the rescue. It's the ace of spades giving me a flush draw. And not only that, but it's just a card that he's almost never going to connect with. Whereas myself, you know, I can blast away liberally on a card like this since... You guys get it. I could have an ace and all that stuff. So when he checks, I do decide to bet again. With all my strong hands and all bluffs, I think in this situation, betting a big size makes the most amount of sense. So I go for a pot and a half, $800 in there. But my opponent, after some thought, remains undeterred as he tosses in a call. After he calls such a big bet on the turn, I get the feeling he's got something pretty strong maybe even a set or some sort of two pair hand that plays this way. When the river comes the five of diamonds and he checks it once again, we have a question between going for it or just waving the white flag, giving up and uh, surrendering the pot. After some thought, I weigh my options and uh, typically I do go for it in situations where it makes sense to do it. But in this exact case, I feel like just giving up is probably better. I don't get the feeling that we're gonna get a fold even if I decide to fire again. 
But maybe I was wrong because I check it and we lose to Jack 10 offsuit, just second pair. Sadly, we don't improve and uh, credit to my opponent. He earns this pot and uh, we lose some money here. Next, I open on the button with ace 10 offsuit, $120. Then the action gets to the small blind who kicks it up to 520. Big blind folds and action gets back to me. Considering that we're shorthanded, I feel like the small blind could be raising all sorts of stuff especially since I opened on the button and he knows that I have a variety of hands to do that with. So with ace-10 offsuit, I'm not a huge fan of calling. It's not really the best cards to do that with, even in position. But I do think it makes a good candidate to uh, re-raise again as a bluff. Not every time, because that would just be a little too sloppy, but at least once in a while. And in this situation, it seems more than okay. So after some thought, I make it $1,200, barely more than a minimum raise. But all I'm thinking is if I had aces or kings, ace-king, queens, you guys get the idea. That is the size I would go for. Looks pretty strong, at least in my opinion, and it seems my opponent agrees because after some thought, he lets it go. So not a ton of action in this one, but we do pick up over $500 uncontested. Not bad. Next, this hand comes up where I open on the button once again. Seems like I'm only playing button hands. Make it 120 with seven six of clubs. Big blind calls, and we go heads up to a flop of 9-7-5 with a club. We've got a straight draw, middle pair, and a backdoor flush draw. So when he checks, I bet $80. And now my opponent check raises to two eighty. dollars As mentioned, we've got a whole lot of stuff going on for my exact hand. So not loving it, but I'm not going anywhere just yet, especially in position. I toss in the extra 200 and we see the four of hearts on the turn. Now he bets $500, and I actually think raising as a bluff is more than okay. We've got a six, so we could represent hands like eight, six suited. And we also have some outs if he does call to uh, improve on the river. But instead, getting a good price and potentially having a good enough hand to win at showdown with second pair, I decide to call, especially against the guy that I think is capable of having bluffs. And we see the three of diamonds on the river. So unexpectedly, we river a straight with a six. Of course, we're still losing to eight, six, but for the most part, we're gonna have the best hand now. And I think that's especially the case when he checks it over to me. I was a little bit confused in this spot, I'm not gonna lie, about how much to bet. In the end, I decided on $1,500, thinking that if I was bluffing with any sort of missed hearts, for example, I would definitely be uh, firing big. But the more I think about it, I think I would actually bet a small size. I'm not actually sure. This one was a bit confusing. Not a situation you run into a whole lot, but turns out it doesn't make any difference as my opponent releases right away. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the last hand of this vlog where there's an early position open to $100 and I'm in the big blind with ace deuce offsuit, a clear defend, I think, so I toss in the money. We go heads up to a flop of ace nine eight with two diamonds. I check it and he bets $80. Really small compared to the size of the pot. And against such a small sizing, I think check raising a whole lot of hands makes a lot of sense. If he had bet bigger, I would most likely just call, but I think it's a mistake actually on his part to bet small on a board like this. And uh, he could be doing it with all sorts of hands like jack 10, flush draws, gut shots, etc. And we gotta protect against hands like that. Can't let them realize equity for just an $80 bet and a potential check back on the turn. So I make it $380. After some deliberation, he makes the call. Turn card is the king of spades. This time I decide to check it over to him. Generally would do the same with draws. I think uh, this is a much better card for him than me. So I decide to check it, exercise some pot control. I know this hand is a bit unorthodox, but it's just the nature of playing shorthanded and facing really small bets as people tend to do these days. Anyway, my opponent checks it back and we got a decent river card. It's the five of clubs. Of course, seven, six does improve to a straight, but seems unlikely and uh, especially so after he checks back the turn. I'm almost positive he would have started betting if that's what he had. So I'm not too concerned about having the losing hand, but don't really know what worse hand is gonna call. Probably more value in just checking and seeing if he wants to bluff. But instead, after I check, he says, I give up, you got it. So I turn it over and sure enough, we win this one. Not a huge pot, but it is over $1,000 and a nice way to end the evening. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Stay tuned for hands from uh, those childhood friends that I'm on a trip with.
All right, so I just finished playing back there some 2040. Fun fact, it's my first time ever playing 2040 No Limit. I didn't even know that until after the session, but either way, good things to report as I won just shy of $10,000. Not only that, but I only played two hours. Not bad for a couple of hours. Obviously I uh, ran pretty hot in a short amount of time, but considering that the opposite has happened, uh, you know, good amount of times, I'll happily take it. Sorry about there not being a ton of hands or I guess a bunch of action hands that are somewhat complicated. Usually my vlogs are like that, but I hope you guys can understand that I don't want to spend all day in a, in a poker room with a bunch of my friends waiting back at the uh, at the hotel trying to go out and have some fun. So had to cut it a bit short today, but I think it was still an enjoyable vlog. And uh, there's also some hands coming up, which uh, I already mentioned from my friends. If you guys are interested, stay tuned for some 1-3 uh, bad beat stories, good beat stories, confusing stories, hands that you're probably just not going to be able to follow because I definitely can't. Yeah, those are coming right up. But as always, thank you guys for watching. And here are some 1-3 shenanigans. Okay hey guys, here we are with Joey. He's gonna tell us about a hand he just played at um, Resorts World 1-3. By the way, Joey the editor, props to this guy for all the videos. Okay, go on. I had pocket sevens and I was playing 1-3 and I raised to $20. Mm -hmm. And then the dude to my right. He, well, it must've been the big blind, right? Back yeah, he was big blind, yeah. Okay. okay, he went around to him and then yeah. he asked me how much was my stack, which is with the bad side. What a jerk. Yeah. And I was like, I think I had like a like 115 mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. And he pushed me all in. I was like, ah, screw it. So I put it in. Okay. We've got a pair. With pocket sevens. What does he have? Ace king? Ah, well, we'll get there. Right. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> the, the flop was like uh, six, six, jack. That's I think it was flop. like ace. I mean, we were, I was all in, so they just put all the cards out. Oh, the turn was an ace. The turn was an ace. And then I think the river was like a four. Uh huh. And I turn and then I turn over my pocket sevens. Uh -huh. I didn't hit obviously, and then he turned over pocket eights. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's fun. Okay, there you have it. How do I start this? You just uh, you just go for it. This is Joseph. I had queen jack. Uh huh. And the flop came queen jack. Some other card that doesn't matter. Who else was in this pot? It was you and then some Chinese lady. Okay, so she was Japanese. Actually, for being honest, she was Vietnamese. I asked. Um, <laughs> and then what happened? Um, some betting occurred. Uh huh. Between the three of us, we all called. I bet. Okay, and then we saw the turn. Which was? I have no clue. Yeah, you do. I don't. I thought the, I thought the card that made me. Yeah, no, yeah. I, and then I called the turn, whatever it was. All it was, three of us called the turn. It was so an it ace. It doesn't really matter what it was. I bet the turn. Okay. That's it was an ace. Oh, okay. Even worse. So the ace was a turn. Uh huh. And then we what, what all, was the, we all we were all we, still in. We all called that money. I didn't want to. Uh huh. And then and what, what the was the river card? card? It was a ten. You know, I had I had two pair. But and I don't know what China but, and I don't know what the Vietnamese lady or you had. But any then, king was a straight. But any king was a straight. Okay, so she checked, and what did I do? You went all in. Uh huh. I folded immediately. <laughs> and then what happened? And then what happened was. Vietnamese lady called. Uh huh. What'd she have? She had top two pair, ace, uh -huh. queen. Uh huh. What did I have? River straight. No. You didn't win? No, I, I had nothing and I lost. <laughs> there you guys go. Uh, we're gonna take a hand from everybody. This is Sid. He's gonna tell us his interesting hand. Okay, go ahead. You had pocket sevens. I had pocket sevens. Uh, -huh. uh re raised to $12. Uh, he called at the start. Flop came out. Uh, 10 5 10. Two clubs and a heart. I bet 20 bucks and he re raises to 50. I call. Next card comes out. Eight of heart. Okay, so two, two clubs, two hearts. 
Um, I bet 100, he calls, and uh, Nigel comes out ace of spades. Uh, I bet another 100, he calls, and I bought the sevens, flopped over, ace eight of spades, of uh, clubs. Lost 200 and 12 bucks or something like that. Nothing you could have done differently. But yeah. I could have gone all in. I should have gone all in. I should have probably gone all in. Pray for Sid. All right, so here's John's hand. At ace 10, he raised before the flop. Yeah, at ace 10, I raised before the flop. Mm -hmm. Everyone else folded. It was heads up between this guy and I. The flop uh, was something like King Jack blank. Okay. So, you know, I had a straight a st draw. So you bet and he called. So I bet he called. What was and the check card? the turn, I think it was like a jack. So I was close. I was one off from the straight. Okay. I bet again, like 40 bucks. He called. The river came. It was blank. I never hit. Mm -hmm. I checked to see what he did, and he raised me like 60 or 80, or he bet 60 or 80, and I just folded because I had air. There it is. That was it. Okay, we're with Anthony. So apologies. His hand is not super, super detailed. I don't have that, that, that memory you do. Look at my cards. I got ace four, unsuited. Uh, I think someone made it 20, and I was like, you know what? I could do that. I went ahead and threw 20 in. Here comes the flop. So I put in 50. Uh huh. And they call. Joey called. I, I think I had one more dude and Joey. Okay. So I had the, the one dude to my left called, and then Joey called. Ooh, the turn was, getting spicy. turn was a four. Turn was a four. I think this is where I screwed up a little bit because, okay, so I did the 100. He freaking calls. Uh -huh. He's got ace nine. What was it going to The Joey? board was ace queen queen. Ace queen queen? Ace queen queen, and the turn was a four, so you had counterfeit two pair and his nine played. Uh -huh. You guys get the idea. Um, Anthony lost, here's the cards. Damn. It'd be like that. <laughs> it do be. <laughs>